Hey everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Couple. Today we've got some more Dollar Tree Christmas DIYs, so we hope you're excited for today's video. Now we are gonna start mixing in some more general home decor DIYs. We will still be doing the Christmas ones up until the 25th, but we wanted to start giving you some different ideas to work on. So let us know in the comments what kind of styles you would like to see in those videos, and then we can try and start making those for you. And as always guys, if you do enjoy today's video, please give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments which one's your favorite. For our first project, we are going to use this cute little frame from Dollar Tree. I don't know if you guys have seen this frame before, but it gave me very anthropology and West Elm kind of vibes. What I did was just take it apart, took the very back piece out. So there's two pieces of glass holding the paper in. So I took the paper out, took all the adhesive off, and then I'm going with these rub-on transfer. They're not stickers, they're just rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be going in with this wreath looking one. If it was more kind of not the holidays, I'd go in with some of the other plant looking ones instead and give it more just kind of simple plant kind of vibes instead of kind of a holiday look. But I wanted a little bit more of a holiday look. So all I did was cut it out and then put it on the glass. It sticks to the glass very, very well, which I was surprised. So I placed it in the middle and then I grabbed this popsicle stick and then just made sure it was all pressed on really, really well. When it's pressed on all the way, you can go ahead and peel it off the glass, which yes, it's super, super satisfying. And then you have this cute, cute little picture frame and everything. I am obsessed with this. Go just run to your Dollar Tree and go grab several of these since I guarantee they'll sell out here soon. For this project, we're gonna be creating the shelf house or uh, tray house display and I absolutely love how this turned out very sleek and modern design so hopefully you guys love it just as much and to start what we're going to be doing is gluing these rectangle wood planks together so they come in a pack of six we're going to need eight total and then I just put a quick line of glue there on the edge and then glued these together and and then we're going to do the same with another two. This is just to initially get them to stick together and then we'll go in and add some strength. Now, of course, we use the hot glue for these time purposes to get these videos done for you guys. I would recommend using something stronger for this project. With the dowels, there isn't a lot for them to glue to, so the hot glue can be a little bit more flimsy. So I definitely look at using maybe a wood glue or E6000. You will have a longer drying time. Um, but I think that would work a little bit better for you. The hot glue still worked pretty well for me and I'm very satisfied with how it turned out. So if you guys wanna try that way, you're more than welcome. It just may not be as sturdy and hold up as long as if you use something different. And as you can see, once we had those two pieces glued together, I put that craft stick along the seam there to give that some strength. And then we're gonna glue these together and do the same thing add another craft stick right along the middle there just so that we're giving these seams a lot more strength and they're not as flimsy next we can move on to our dowel rods now you will need two of the 12 inch packs and i'm going to go ahead and spray paint all of these gold and after we've created our two shelves with the four planks we can move on to kind of creating the frame using these gold dowel rods. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I want these vertical dowels to be right on the corner or as close to that corner as possible. So I held it up in the corner and then I aligned this horizontal one that's gonna go right in the front of that shelf. As you can see, this one you wanna glue down not quite to the corner because you wanna have a little bit of room to where that vertical rod is going to go so you want to glue it just off of that corner as you can see there's a little bit of a gap there but you're going to glue that right on the front 
of those wood planks. And then once we have that in place, we can move on to gluing the vertical one and just put a little bit of glue right there on the corner and on that dowel that's in the front. And when you guys are gluing these pieces, make sure that they're dried. Uh, the last thing that you want to do is try to move on to your next piece and the hot glue or whatever glue you're using it hasn't dried all the way and then your dowels are slipping and they're moving around. Um, so I would definitely give it enough time to dry in place before moving on to the next piece. And then what we're doing is we just are adding the side piece. Again, we're just gonna glue it right there in the corner. And then I worked all the way around. I found this was just easy for me. Um, maybe you'll find a different way that works a little bit easier for you. But I started in one corner and then I just worked all the way around this shelf, gluing each piece. And then when I got to parts like this and I needed to cut, you don't have to do any real measurements. You can just line it up, mark it, and then cut it where it needs to be to fill in those little gaps. Um, since the dowels aren't going to go all the way across there, you will need a little bit of a, a piece to go right there and fill that gap. And when you're cutting these pieces to fit in these certain lengths here, I would always try to cut it a little bit longer than what you think. Sometimes when you line these up and you try to cut it exactly how it is, they end up being short or if like right here where you need to trim a little bit off, you're going to end up being a little short and then you have a gap and then it just doesn't look as polished. So I would measure the area that you need and then cut it a little bit longer so that you can make sure that's gonna fit in there. Cause you can always cut the extra off, but if you cut too much, then you're just gonna have that gap. So now that we have the bottom shelf and the four dials coming up, we can move on to our second shelf. And I found that these Krylon spray cans worked really well for this. I ended up using four of them, one in each corner. And the reason I use them is they hold up this second shelf for you so you don't have to worry about trying to hold that up while you're gluing or anything. I felt like it was a good distance between the bottom shelf and the top shelf and it keeps it just nice and sturdy for you. So if you wanna recreate this and you've got some spray cans, that's what I would do. I think it will look really good this way when you're done and it will give you that assistance to hold that shelf up for you. And then once we have that laying flat there, we can move on to adding the frame around this shelf. And I'm just doing the exact same thing as I did before. I'm just starting on one corner and I'm working all the way around until I meet up with that and just measuring and cutting as I need to while I'm moving around this. One thing that I like to do as well, when I use the hot glue, I try to make it as minimal as I can in these seams. And then once my structure's completed, for example, this piece here, I'll flip it upside down and then all of the seams that are underneath that you're not gonna be able to see when this is displayed, I'll go through and fill it with a lot more glue. So that will give it a lot more strength and then you're not gonna be able to see it. But what I like to do is do the very minimal amount at first, just so my structure is put together and then go in after with more glue. And you could do that the same way if you wanted to kind of put this together with just hot glue and then go in after with like E6000 or wood glue, you could also do that. I know some people do a mixture of E6000 and hot glue at the same time. I've kind of heard mixed things, like sometimes it doesn't work or it gets a little bit messy. So let me know if you've had experience with that. I still haven't tried it yet. Um, the system that we use works pretty well for us. So once we have our two shelves completed, we can move on to adding the top part of this house. And what I'm doing here is adding these little side pieces. I'm just going to measure the gap here and then 
cut the dowel and glue it in on each side. And then we're going to create the roof of this. So I messed around with it a couple times trying to figure out how the best way would be to do the roof. And this is what I came up with. So what I ended up doing is putting a little dab of hot glue on each corner here. And then I took both of these rods for each side held them in place and kind of laid them on each other until that glue was dried. And they seemed to hold up really well that way. Um, and then what I did was put a little tiny piece at the top just to keep those together. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And as we're wrapping up this project, it is a little bit more intricate. It does take a little bit more time but I think this is one of my favorites that we've done for Christmas. And it looks very modern, very high end, and it only costs a few dollars. So it's definitely worth your time if you wanted to go in and recreate this. And the last part here is just to add this top piece. So you wanna measure from the top part to the other top part, and you want it to just lay right in that little V that we created and then just put a little bit of glue in there and that's gonna be the very final piece of this project. This last project, I'm duping something that I saw from Pottery Barn, and I'm taking these cones from Dollar Tree. They came in a two pack, so they're only 50 cents each. And then I'm going in with this knife and cutting off just the very base. So something that you can do is just try and get the very base part off so that you're left with the cone. It doesn't matter if it's pretty, because after I got that bottom piece off, you can go in with scissors and make the very bottom of the cone look very pretty and nice and round. This is what I ended up with. This is the cone before and then after. And like I said, once I kind of had, it was pretty rough after I took it out. I just went in with scissors and went all the way around and it came out really, really pretty. Then I'm going in with this 12 pack of these plastic bowls, which makes them around like eight cents a piece. And then we are going to put it at the very top. I'm just going to be using hot glue to put this on. You can use E6000. I don't think that's necessary for this project just because it's not going to be holding a ton of weight, but hot glue works. You can use E6000 for sure. I just put it on the very base of the bowl and then just made sure it was center. It's clear, so it's pretty easy to make sure it's center. And then I just put it on top. And then I did do another one where it was glass, this glass vase from Dollar Tree, and then put the bowl on top. I didn't end up liking this one as much once I spray painted it, so I did scrap it in the end. And then the final one that I'll be doing is very similar to one that I did in this video, I'll link it here, but I took this bigger bowl from Dollar Tree and then one of these smaller plastic bowls. They are not the same ones that I've been using, they're a different one that doesn't really have a lip. And I'm going to be gluing it at the bottom. I used hot glue. Once you put hot glue on this, it does stick pretty instantly. You don't really have time to move it around, so make sure it is center. And then I just flipped it over and that's kind of how this bowl will be. I went in with this gold spray paint that we got from Walmart for all three of them after. Once they were finished, I was absolutely obsessed with how the duped one looks. And of course, I'm obsessed with how this one looks since we did do this project before. And then this one just did not turn out how I wanted it. So like I said, we just scrapped it. But these two, I absolutely love. 
And then like how it is at Pottery Barn, I'm going to be putting a candle at the top of this one. Just make sure it is for decorative purposes only. Don't light it, just be careful. And then the smaller one, I did put the candle inside. Thanks for watching guys. We hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more of these Christmas DIYs, you can jump through right here and watch our Christmas playlist with all of our other videos. Thanks again. We hope you have a wonderful day and make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time we upload a new video.